everybody and welcome to today's uh, meeting and forum. My name is Associate Professor Mimi Claudine Watts. I'm going to share my screen so that we can start the proceedings officially. Uh, so, just have to be patient for the screen to come. There we go. Start show from my end. So I've got two slides here, literally one to introduce myself. I am helping to host today on behalf of the World Federation for Public Health Association Policy Committee. And the theme is Mind Matters, Elevating Mental Health Wellbeing, Global Health for the Policy Committee. Uh, I am primarily based at Federation University as Director of Industry Corporation, and I am also an Associate Professor in the areas of public health leadership and of nursing. And I chair the African Science Research and Innovation Council for the African Union Commission Australian uh, chapter. Before we start, and um, in line with what we will normally do here in Australia is to welcome and acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands and waters where our campuses but also our centers and institutions are located and we pay our respects to elders past and present and extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander First Nations people, but also to all the indigenous people located anywhere in the world globally. So thank you for making the time to join the session. Just some housekeeping. In front of us, we have um, today's uh, agenda for the forum. And I'm really pleased that um, despite our multiple locations across the world, which is what the World Federation for Public Health, of course, is, uh, everybody's been able to join the forum regardless of the time. Uh, I am going to be your host for today, and this is the brief rundown. So following um, the brief introduction and welcome that I have done, we're going to have Mr. Moda al Mikdadi from the World Federation for Public Health Association Policy Committee do a presentation on behalf of that group. We also then, uh, that presentation will be followed by Dr. Lillian Gandor and Ms. Uh, Jumana Kalut's uh, presentation from the American University of Beirut, followed by that of Dr. Hen Hala Alawadi from the Dubai Health Authority. And then finally, our last presentation is going to be from Dr. Karim Abdel Wahid from the Association Tunisienne pour la Promotion de la Santé, Tunisian Association for Health Promotion. Then uh, we're going to hopefully have a word from one of the uh, members of the World Federation for Public Health Association, and uh, I will then conclude uh, the event. Some basic housekeeping. Uh, you've got the context and the background which was shared with everybody. And we all know that mental health is a major public health issue that ne uh, negatively affects a cross section of the population worldwide. Such issues surpass all geographical boundaries and impact individuals of all ages, genders, socioeconomic backgrounds and cultures. It is crucial to address mental health as it influences various, various aspects of human life, such as physical health, productivity, relationships, and overall well-being. Moreover, neglecting mental health can lead to significant economic burdens, strain on healthcare systems, 
increased rates of disability and reduced quality of life for millions of individuals globally. By prioritizing mental health on the global health agenda, we can promote resilience, we can foster inclusive societies and reduce stigma and secure access to mental health services. Furthermore, this will provide support for individuals, thereby promoting the advancement of global health and sustainable development objectives. Uh, one of the uh, reasons we've decided to do this during the global uh, Global Health Week is because we've all identified mental health as a significant issue. However, the specific aims of today's uh, meeting uh, or, and this event is to ensure that is to is to ensure and highlight the impact of uh, mental health amongst diverse population groups, but also offering insights into current treatment methods while proposing solutions to alleviate suffering. So we've got some key areas that we're going to focus on, being the experiences working and raising awareness about mental health issues in different population groups, propose and make policy recommendations for policy makers, and the event will amplify the voices of public health advocates on the issue of mental health and mental health uh, and health promotion overall. But importantly, we hope that it will create collaboration and networking opportunities for the members of the World Federation for Public Health Association, their partners, their institutions, but also other key stakeholders that are out there. Uh, there is a brief guide here for the speakers, which I think I've already uh, done some of that during the housekeeping prior to the recording beginning. So uh, each speaker has got about 15 minutes uh, for the presentation. Uh, as much as we said Q&A, I think it would be good that we go through all the presentations before we start the Q&A sessions. All our presentations are in English and hopefully we can um, translate them, but we're going to make them publicly and uh, available on different uh, media platforms. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows that it is a recorded uh, session, hence uh, the access to the recordings will be available to all of you, but also to people outside of the World Federation for Public Health Association, again, because the recordings are going to be made made public. So please, if you have any objection, let us know. Otherwise, let's uh, proceed as a, as a agreed. Any questions, please? Thank you, all clear. Thanks. Moda, over to you. Please. We cannot hear you. You're on mute. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. Um, today I'll be talking about the mental health of Indigenous Australian people. Uh, before I start, I would like to acknowledge all Indigenous people in the world, the Waramungu people, the traditional custodians of the Tenant Creek region, and pay my respect to the elders past, present and future in Australia who inspired this work. I would like to acknowledge as well the World Federation of Public Health Associations, highlighting uh, Dr. Marta Lomazzi, Associate Professor Mimi Watts, Professor Edfenso Hernandez, uh, Mrs. Maria Mata, and Ms. Alentaksha Shedello. So my name is Moda. I have a Master's of Public Health from the University of Technology, Sydney. Uh, in terms of employment, I work as an intern in the, work in the World Federation of Public Health Associations in the Policy Committee. Uh, before that, I used to work as a tackling Indigenous Smoking Health Promotion and Education Officer in Anini Health Aboriginal Corporation. Uh, my presentation today will be focusing on the work that I have done with the Indigenous people in Australia. 
So who are the indigenous Australian people? Indigenous people are the original inhabitants of the land we call now Australia. The indigenous people have a cultural history going back 60,000 years. Indigenous people comprise of two ethnic groups, Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islanders. And this is a photo of myself, Annie Morrison, and my friend uh, Patrick Simpson in Dwagyola community. So these groups consist of many communities who have different languages, cultural traditions, and spiritual beliefs. It's worth mentioning as well that before the British colonization, there were nearly 250 languages in Australia. However, currently we've got, we've got only 123 languages and 109 out of them are endangered. So in 2021, there were nearly 940,000 Aboriginal Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, representing 3.8 of the total Australian population. 350 of them were living in major cities and nearly 400,000 were living in inner and outer regional areas, while nearly 150,000 um, were living in remote and very remote areas. So I used to work in the Northern Territory in the Barclay region. Uh, to be more precise in Tennant Creek Town. So I used to serve 10 Aboriginal communities uh, other than Tennant Creek. The main aim of my job was to deliver health promotion and educational support, as well as to organize health events in this area. So the burden of mental health among Indigenous people. In 2018, mental and substance use disorders were estimated to cause 54,263 years of healthy life loss, disability adjusted life years or daily. Between 2017 to 2019, there were over 47,000 hospitalizations for Indigenous Australians with a principal diagnosis of mental health related conditions. Mental health is responsible for 10% of the health gap between Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and non-Indigenous Australians. Nearly a third of Indigenous adults aged 18 and over reported high or very high levels of psychological distresses in 2018. So as you can see here, depression and anxiety were the most common mental health issues among indigenous people. Females were more likely to be diagnosed with depression and anxiety than males, while males were more likely to be diagnosed with behavioral emotional problems than females. Suicide rate among indigenous people and non-indigenous people. So the below line represent the suicide rate for the non-indigenous Australians, while the above line represent the suicide rate for the indigenous people. 21.3 uh, 21 uh, 21 of indigenous people in 2010 uh, commit, have committed suicide, while the number has jumped to 29.9. In terms of non-indigenous people, 10.7 per 100,000 people in 2010 committed suicide. The number has jumped as well to 11.7. Overall, you can see the gap is widening between, uh, between the uh, indigenous people and non-indigenous people in terms of suicide rates. So as a result of the bad policies that were imposed on the indigenous people by the previous Australian governments, indigenous children were forcibly removed from their families and communities in the 1900s. Children were forbidden to speak their native languages or refer to themselves by their birth names. Children were placed in stations and non-indigenous homes. They were trained to be domestic servants for unpaid labor to white families. The objective was to Europeanize indigenous people lifestyle. Survivors of the stolen generation have poorer health outcomes than indigenous Australians. It's estimated that one in three children were removed from their families. In 2008, former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd gave an official apology to Indigenous Australians, especially the stolen generation people. Trauma. So as a result of the stolen generation and colonial actions, trauma was transmitted through generation, resulting in intergeneration trauma. Intergeneration trauma can occur when community members or relatives exposed to harmful behaviors such as racism, violence and substance misuse. Intergenerational trauma is resurfacing as a result of the current interventions within the indigenous communities. So there are other factors that contribute to the burden of mental health as well. Uh, for example, poverty and unemployment. Nearly half of indigenous people were unemployed between 2016 to 2021. Indigenous people are between two and three times more likely to live in poverty than non-indigenous people in Australia.
Indigenous unemployment rates are well over twice than non-Indigenous people in cities and regional centers and are much, much higher in remote areas. Housing. Indigenous households experience much, much higher rates of overcrowding than non-Indigenous households, especially in remote areas. At the 2021 census, over 17% of the Aboriginal population were assessed as living in a crowded dwelling, compared with 6.2 for the non-Indigenous population. Unhealthy behaviors and poor nutrition. So this bar chart, this bar chart represents the prevalence of, the, of these selected health risk factors among Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people between 2018 to 2019. As you can see here, nearly 70% of Aboriginal people were diagnosed with obesity or overweight. Nearly 35% of them, uh, you know, smoked daily, and nearly 20% overconsumed alcohol. So there are several health initiatives that aim to strengthen indigenous health outcomes. The first one is national community controlled health organizations. So overall, the development of the of these national uh, Aboriginal community controlled health organizations in Australia reflects a broader movement towards indig indigenous self-determination, cultural empowerment and community led development. These organizations play a vital role in promoting indigenous rights, improving outcomes and fostering greater equity and inclusion for indigenous peoples. Indigenous staff development courses. So there are several courses in Australia that aim to upskill Indigenous people in the field of Indigenous health and give them the opportunity to further contribute to Indigenous health. Health promotion programs. There are several uh, health promotion programs that aim to directly or indirectly improve mental health. Indigenous mental health counselors, case management. So Indigenous mental health counselors play a vital role in promoting mental wellness, um, healing trauma and strengthening indigenous communities um, when it comes to cultural development. So government support. The Australian government spent more than four billion on indigenous specific health initiatives in 2022 to 2023. The main themes in this programs are primary health care, improving access to primary health care, targeted health initiatives and capital work. So case study, Mental Health Week 2023. So we have uh, collaborated with the, Tenant, with the Tenant Creek Primary School to celebrate Mental Health Week in 2023. This board was designed by my friend Gary James and myself as well. So the right hand side of the board represent the smoking and vaping lifestyle. So if you're smoking and vaping, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna feel uh, stressed, anxious. You're gonna overthink. However, if you quit smoking, you're gonna go to the to the next cycle, which is the healthy lifestyle cycle. You're going to be happy. You're going to be social. You're going to be relaxed. You're going to have a healthy mind. And these sticky notes represent the voices of the children after we deliver this health education. And the majority of them said that, you know, I don't want to smoke when I grow up because smoking is bad. You know, smoking equals bad vibes. You know, smoking is no good. Are you OK Day? So are you OK Day? It's an international day that, um, you know, that raises awareness about the mental health issues um, globally. And that day we've collaborated with the primary school as well uh, to celebrate this day with the kids. So recommendations. So the first recommendation is to continue to acknowledge the burden of the colonization on the mental health of indigenous Australians. More health professionals should be engaged in indigenous health, especially in remote areas. All health workers should be trained to deliver culturally appropriate health care services. More houses should be built to accommodate indigenous people, especially in remote areas. More public health awareness programs focusing on mental health, more, um, more employment opportunities dedicated to indigenous people, more research about indigenous mental health should be conducted as well. These are the differences. Any questions for me? Thank you, Moda. Not from me. Uh, great presentation, great insights about uh, the challenges, but also the success stories and the learnings from the indigenous uh, communities. I think the power of the people and the acceptance of you by the people with no questions asked is something Absolutely. that we must 
highlight. So thank you so much. Yeah, but before I finish, I would like also to thank all indigenous people in the Barclay region for their hospitality. You know, I lived there for nearly three years over there and everyone was super welcoming. No one asked me where do, where no, no one asked me where do I come from? What's the color of my skin? You know, as long as you're there respecting the indigenous culture, respecting their values, respecting their lifestyle and you know, you're welcome to stay over there. Thank you so much. Thank you. So our next uh, speaker is going to uh, be uh, Dr. Lillian Gando and Ms. Jumana Kalut from the American University of Beirut. The floor is yours and please just take a minute or two to introduce yourselves. Hello everyone. Um, so glad to be part of this very important uh, global event. My name is Lillian Randur. I'm an associate professor of mental health epidemiology at the American University of Beirut and the coordinator of the PhD epidemiology program at the faculty as well. And uh, my research focuses on mental health of uh, young adults, mental health, including substance use. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jumana Kalot. I'm an instructor of public health practice at the Center for Public Health Practice at the Faculty of Health Sciences at AUB. And uh, I work on uh, practice projects at the faculty. I am the project manager for the mental health initiative uh, that we're going to present, uh, where Dr. Randur is the main technical lead on that project. Can you see our screen? Yes. Yes, 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 I can yes. see. Okay. And, slide and everybody, yep. if you're not presenting, just go off the camera just to give them good wavelength, please. Can you see it in presenter form? Yes. Yes, we can okay, see you perfect. and we can see okay. the slides as well. Okay, excellent. Perfect. Um, oh, they appear so tiny on our end. Let me see if I can um, figure out. Mm, a way to um, this one. No. Okay. You can see them well still. OK, all right, so um, our presentation today is um, going to be about trying to cultivate a culture of mental health, wellness and well-being at, at a university. The idea is that we've done this at the American University of Beirut as, of a, as a pilot, but the idea is to, um, um, is to see how well it has worked in the hopes of um, you know adopting it and adapting it to other contexts um, and other university populations as well. So we thought we'll start with maybe just a quick background of where Lebanon is since this is a global event. We are a small country in the Middle East uh, bordering the Mediterranean Sea. It's a, it's a quite a small country um, but it has had a very very rich history <laughs> over uh, over the several decades. We've had a history of um, lots of uh, uncertainty, political uncertainty, economic instability, and continuous security threats, all of which are obvious um, threats to one's mental well-being as well. And um, since 2011, uh, with the Syrian refugee crisis, we've been one of the major host countries uh, globally as well, with the highest ratio per capita and per square meters in the world. So we have about 1.5 million registered Syrian refugee population, but um, the numbers are way beyond that in terms of unregistered um, Syrian refugees as well. Um, and what? Sorry. OK. And in addition to that, um, in 2019, uh, we uh, in October 2019, the revolution started. And so there has been a, a downward economic and uh, financial crisis since then. Uh, we've also uh, globe as as the globe has as well. We've experienced the COVID pandemic 
um, which has led to a lot of intermittent lockdowns and closures, which also affected uh, the population's uh, mental well-being. And um, I'm sure the whole world has heard of the August 4th uh, port explosion in 2020, which, uh, which also left a lot of people in and outside Lebanon devastated. Having said that, pre-crisis, uh, we knew that mental health was also a burden among the community. These are two studies that were conducted within the community. And let me just um, show you that 26% um, of the uh, children and adolescents that were surveyed uh, back then, so this is study number one that was conducted in the greater Beirut area. Beirut is the capital city, and so what we did is we sampled um, young children and adolescents aged 12 to 17, and we screened them and we used the DAVA. So using the DAVA, we found that actually 26% had one or more mental health disorders. What was really shocking for us though is not just the number of people with mental health disorders, but the number that has actually ever sought any kind of mental health care. And this is not, uh, 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 specialized services. So this is not necessarily a psychiatrist or psychologist. This is any kind of care for mental for their mental health symptoms. And you can see that it's only 6%. So there is a 94% treatment gap there. We repeated the study uh, using a national sample a few years later, and we found also, but this is was more of a screening for mental health disorders rather than diagnostic. But we found also that about a third had any kind of mental health problems um, or mental health disorders. And again, only 5% um, were uh, had ever sought treatment. So the treatment gap that is observed globally is obviously also global, uh, uh, you know, um, observed um, nationally. So with all this in mind, uh, we wanted to look into the AUB population because we are part of this community. And we found that, and this Office of the Student Affairs had been collecting information and data on the mental well-being of, of their students. And, uh, you know, with the shift in learning modes, if you recall back in 2020, 2021, we had to shift to online learning modes. And that put a lot of stress and anxiety on the students as well, in addition to the economic and social instability and the fact that some students had to go back and, and you know live with their parents when they hadn't been living with their parents for a long time and vice versa um and so there was a lot of demand on the on the mental health services that were existing and there was a lot of overbooking so there was high demand um and and obviously very limited supply given the uh, enormous demand uh, demand that happened also suddenly but there was also, uh, it was felt that there was also some kind of, uh, you know, lack in mental health literacy among students, faculty and staff. And um, and this is what triggered basically amongst, uh, you know, triggered uh, the need for a mental health initiative at the AUB uh, community level. So just to give you a quick uh, background of what we do at AUB in terms of mental health, uh, I am there is an AUB mental health council that's been operating for the past uh, few years now. I'm a member of that council and we over, go over a lot of the policies and procedures related to mental health. For example, we try to ameliorate uh, the insurance coverage for students when it comes to their mental health, increasing the number of psychology sessions and so on and so forth, just to make sure that we are meeting the demands. Uh, but the work also, but there's a lot of work that's also done at the AUB Office of Student Affairs and at the AUB Medical Center. And so together there's this uh, participatory approach uh, to addressing mental well-being. Uh, we we uh, we are a group of uh, let's say uh, faculty uh, uh, at a at the Faculty of Health Sciences that decided that it was high time that we addressed uh, mental well-being of students more specifically. So we sought and received a, a Mastercard Foundation um, a grant. And as part of the grant, we had three components to address the mental health e-course, which I'm going to be presenting, and the peer support program and the training of the faculty and staff, which my colleague, Ms. Jumana Kalot, who is also the manager uh, of the entire grant, is also going to be presenting. Um, let me just tell you what the what the e-course is. So the e-course, as the name denotes, is a course that we developed um, in a very multidisciplinary and a participatory approach. Multidisciplinary is basically because we, as you can see, there we we collaborated with psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, other public health experts, um, instructional design experts with IT to make sure that it's actually you know a course that is looks attractive and is aesthetically acceptable by the students. And of course the 
the primary primary stakeholders were involved in the process who were the students and we don't have time to go through the details of the process of how we ended up you know doing the whole uh, you know the whole project but uh, rest assured that every single step of the process the students were actually involved in the decision making and in the feedback so the module, uh, the e-course had five modules, including uh, a conclusive module at the end. Just going to give you uh, 10 seconds to read through the titles. There was an introduction to mental health. The second module was about common and mental health problems in youth. And here it was, you know, because anxiety and depression is kind of like common knowledge for many people. So what we did here is we also addressed some other severe mental health disorders, including substance use, so that students are aware of what constitutes a mental health problem beyond just anxiety and depression, which seem to be common knowledge in, in at least in our population. Uh, we taught them about the critical mental health signs and symptoms, and the idea behind this module was to increase identification and mental health literacy so that they can actually either seek care themselves or help others in, in seeking care, their friends. We taught them a lot of self-care and coping strategies, terms that they were uh, not familiar with, and the evaluation actually showed us that they were quite uh, happy with the fact that we had introduced these concepts to them. And obviously, module five is how to support others in need of mental health support. This is just some screenshots from the e-course what is anorexia, for example? People are maybe young people are not quite aware that eating disorders are mental health problems. Um, and then um, this is another uh, example on, for example, defining for them what is emotion focused coping when you have stress. And we showed them a lot of we we taught them a lot of emotion focused coping strategies. And you know the concept of reframing. What is reframing? And we gave them some tips, uh, key tips for reframing. Um, and so I don't have time, we don't have time to go through the evaluation findings or the details of the evaluation, but let's, uh, we did a process, we did, we did content uh, development evaluation, we did process evaluation, and we did impact evaluation. Um, and we are in the process of writing up uh, the two papers, one explaining the process of de developing this um, e-course, because it's important uh, in terms of knowledge sharing to share it with others, and also the evaluation of the e-course. Um, in the interest of time, I just want to show you some of the... Um, it's slow, right? Uh, and some of the, uh, you know, the statements that were shared by the students. Um, I like most, uh, what I like most about this course is the reassurance that everyone struggles with mental health. And I found specific numbers adhere to the credibility. So this is what we really strived on working on to make it sure that it's contextually relevant, right? So this is not uh, an e-course that's been adopted from a Western population. All of the examples were local. All of the examples were uh, relevant to the students. And so this is why we advocate that anyone who eventually, for example, does such an e-course, uh, makes sure that it is uh, relevant and uh, and and. Um, uh, acceptable by the uh, students. And I am going to leave the floor to my colleague uh, to talk about the peer support program and the training of staff. Yes, thank you, Olivia. So to complete the loop of the mental health uh, initiative at uh, AUB, we have the mental health um, peer support program and the training of faculty and staff. Uh, the aim of the uh, mental, uh, peer support program is to grow the enabling environment for normalizing the mental health discourse and promote uh, healthy peer dialogues. So uh, we developed a, a, an intensive process for developing the mental health uh, uh, peer support program at AUB, starting with ma mapping of existing services because we have peer support programs at AUB. So we wanted to see what are these support, uh, peer support programs? And we used a, an evidence-based uh, participatory approach uh, to identify the gaps needed and develop a sustainable, and I here quote, the sustainable program for uh, mental health uh, peer support. And then uh, towards offering the service. Uh, we can say uh, after a rigorous uh, selection process and intensive training and the content of the training is uh, uh, in front of you at the slide, we have now 16 dedicated 
peer supporters who abide by certain logistical and ethical obligations. So all of these uh, points that you have, you see in, in the list uh, that the peer supporters have been trained on. So now we have at the Council Center an established peer support, uh, peer to peer support program on mental health. The second, uh, uh, the third part of the initiative is the training of faculty and staff. So in the training of faculty and staff, we have different target groups, target groups that are frontliners and in direct contact with the students and uh, uh, faculty who teach the students. So the main um, uh, target audience for us, depending on their role, we had the student housing staff and the protection officers. Each has have their own roles in crisis management. So we did training for the housing staff and the protection officers. And as you see, the training for housing staff includes uh, different topics, signs and symptoms of uh, common mental health disorders, communication skills, how to intervene in the crisis, de-escalation and suicide screening, and referral mechanisms. You know, the students stay in the dorms for three to four years, and it's important for our housing staff, the, dorm the dormitory, to, to uh, be able to screen and uh, connect with students and um, support uh, during mental health crises. Uh, for the protection officers, uh, they have uh, a, mild, uh, a, a small intervention where they pick up the students if they have any, if there's any crisis, and they take them to the emergency room. So, if there is an emergency in, in at the university, we train the protection officers on core topics related also to signs and symptoms, when to intervene, and de-escalation techniques, and dignified uh, uh, restraining methods and suicide screening. Of course, the referral mechanisms and self-care. So what are the take-home messages from our uh, mental health initiative? Uh, it's important to use a holistic, interprofessional, multidisciplinary, and participatory approach. Uh, as Dr. Landur said, acknowledge the importance of contextualizing and adaptability of the material. All the case studies that we use in the mental health e-course are contextualized to the Lebanese uh, context. Uh, it was important to have its institutional support for sustainability and impact. Uh, now we have all the support from the institutions and the Mental health e-course is institutionalized at AUB. The training of staff is institutionalized. I forgot to mention the training of faculty. Faculty members are academic advisors for students, and we are developing a short uh, e-course for faculty to take it uh, and uh, also do de-escalation and screen the signs and symptoms of uh, mental health disorders. Uh, so we achieved success, hopefully, uh, through adoption of intervention and a more mental health literate community. Our aim is to increase the mental health literacy and change the discourse about mental health in our students. So this is the project team. As you see, we have different uh, 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 consultants on the project and uh, backgrounds, and they are um, multidisciplinary and diverse. And uh, we strive, this is supported by the MasterCard Foundation Scholars e-learning initiative. And this is a picture of our uh, students enjoying their university life and hopefully having a good mental health uh, in AUB. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Gando and uh, uh, Ms. Kalut. Uh, for a wonderful uh, presentation. I think you can stop sharing your screen and we just open the floor or we just hold on to our questions that we said, I think at the beginning till the end so that we don't eat into other presenters uh, time, uh, if that's mm, okay with everybody. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I think you're still sharing your screen. Yes, we stopped sharing the screen. Can you see it? Yeah, you can't see our screen now. No, so that's good. Thank you. So uh, thanks for that presentation. Um, please write down your questions so that we can uh, get to them at the end of the session. Our next uh, 
presenter is going to be Dr. Hen Alawadi from the Dubai Health Authorities. And could I just say, um, I've gone with the titles that have been shared with me. So professors, if you are a professor, but you're here as doctor, my apologies, because I've just gone with the titles that were shared with me because I would not like to get your very well earned titles wrong. Thanks. Over to you. You're on mute. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thank, thank you for having uh, giving me the opportunity to share our experience uh, uh, in my country and my emirate. Unfortunately, I have some trouble in my connection, so I will not be able to share my presentation. Uh, but I will be more than happy to share it with you uh, later on. Uh, just to give you a brief about uh, uh, our initial, Prof I'm Dr. Ahend Al Awadi. Yeah. Is my voice clear? Yes, but Prof, if you have it, I'm more than happy if you wanted to drop it, if you're with somebody in an email, then maybe I could help share from my end or to send it to Moda, and Moda can actually share the screen while you talk to the screen. So is it yes, okay if I can, I can um, is it okay if I can share it uh, through my camera? Because I have a connection in my email, actually. Please do that. That would be wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm not very sure if it's clear or no. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, just yes. to give you a brief about uh, Dubai Health Authority is responsible of taking care of all the health wise matter in the Emirate of Dubai. Emirate of Dubai is a part of a seven Emirate in the United Arab Emirates. So uh, mental health initiative was initiated by our leadership. Uh, uh, by our executive council due to the need of the mental wealth. I'm not going to go through the uh, meaning of the mental health, but uh, just to give you a brief that uh, knowing the fact that mental health strategy of the Emirate of Dubai introduced to mental health initiative present the concern from uh, our uh, executive councils and from our, our leaders to initiate this uh, initiative. Uh, we focus this initiative on three major pillars. One of it is the mental health training program. Uh, secondly, is the mental health screening. And the third one is the mental health awareness. So uh, this initiative ultimately will uh, promote the mental health by increasing the knowledge of mental health disorder diseases. It will support the people suffering from mental health disorders, uh, fighting the stigma and confronting the stigma, and also reduce the burden of the mental health diseases that will ultimately uh, help in the health system overall. So uh, our initiative is an initiative that started from 2022. It will go on until 2020. First stage was developing the material and design the training programs uh, and create the education materi material that we needed for our awareness programs. Uh, last year, we had a successful uh, uh, results, including the uh, implementation of the mental health training master plan for parents and educators. Uh, also, we conducted a lot of mental health awareness, physically, virtually, and using the social media campaigns. Uh, then we start developing the community-based screening protocol and early intervention program that will include the tools, the guidelines, and the training materials. Uh, this year, inshallah, we will continue our training programs, but for different target groups. Uh, we will uh, implement also the screening tool healthcare training as well as we will continue our awareness program. So uh, last year, we started phase one of our mental health uh, training program. Uh, why we started in our, uh, we decided to start it in the community of the school and parents and educators. Why? Because according to WHO, one in five children struggle with mental health condition. So we decided to start with the community of school health, their parents, the educators, the faculty members in the school. So our objective was to promote for uh, mental health and to train the adults about the signs and symptoms of mental health disorders, 
uh, to give support for the young ones suffering from mental health and confronting the stigma that is uh, going around the medical, the mental disorders. So we targeted uh, three uh, health, uh, three groups. First of all, it was the healthcare professionals, such as doctors and nurses in the community of school. Uh, we are blessed to have uh, a very strong school health system. Uh, each of our private school uh, are mandated to have a school nurse in the faculty of school. So we targeted them uh, to increase their uh, uh, knowledge and awareness about uh, the health, the mental health. And then also we targeted the teachers and other support staff, as well as the parents. We had four different modules. First, uh, first one was the mental health first aid program. It was a 10 hour, uh, uh, hour program. It was in person and we targeted mostly the healthcare. Uh, we had uh, the second module, it was a four hour module, men mental health champions. We targeted the teachers and the faculty members. And then we had two uh, awareness uh, mental health topics. It was virtual sessions. It was targeted for teachers as well as the parents of the students. So uh, the the module, the first module, the mental health uh, first aid module, it was a ten hour session. Uh, we were it was accredited for three years. We were blessed to have thirteen sessions, and the number of beneficiaries was two hundred fifty six uh, nurses and doctors as well as we had uh, a survey that was conducted for the pre and post survey. We had a very good results showing the effectiveness of the training that we did, as you can see through the numbers. Uh, the second module, it was targeting the faculty of the school. We had eight sessions of those and number of beneficiaries was uh, 149 uh, uh, individuals. Uh, as well as we did also for them the pre and post survey and it shows a very good uh, numbers in term of their knowledge after the uh, training module. The second two workshops, it was mainly a virtual workshops that we uh, meant to increase the awareness about the mental health. Uh, the first one, it was targeted for this uh, to talk about uh, the students mental health matters. We had eight sessions of those. Uh, and uh, 605 uh, attendees attended this workshop. The second one was more focused for the parents. We had a 38 session of that one, 3,912 parents attended these virtual sessions. Uh, overall, we had thir uh, 13 mental uh, first aid sessions, uh, 256 beneficiaries. The champions, we had eight sessions, 149, eight sessions for the mental health matters for students, uh, and uh, 38 sessions for child mental health matters. Over over the number of sessions and the total number of our beneficiaries was around 5,000. Uh, we covered the school, uh, we covered the beneficiaries at schools, the leaders, the teachers, the counselors, parents, uh, and many others. Uh, this is just uh, the map of the Emirate of Dubai to show you that we try to uh, target it as much as uh, we can in the, in the geographical matters to ensure that in each, in each uh, area in our Emirate, uh, there were some people who knows uh, a little bit about mental health training and had some sort of training in terms of mental health. Moving on to our second uh, pillar of our initiative, which is the screening program. Screening program, uh, it is consists of uh, many things. Our main target is to create a screening tool uh, for our uh, general practitioner and family health practitioners uh, in order for them to use these tools for any individuals entering their clinic. Uh, we focused on three major diseases that was based on our national statistics of ranking of top mental health diseases. Uh, we had three uh, top uh, diseases. It was depression, anxiety, and eating disorder. Based on that, we created our mental health tool. Uh, we started in 2023 creating this tool and the guideline and the training material. Uh, this year, inshallah, we will uh, start training our physicians and how to use uh, these tools and how to uh, use it into the best uh, scenario. Our third and last uh, pillar of our mental health initiative, it was the awareness. Uh, as we all know, it is very important to increase the awareness of the individuals and the emirate uh, in, all, in, in all. So we try to focus 
on educating the community, providing the tools and pathways for reaching out for, for help if they need it to break the stigma. Basically, we focus on the main topics, with the, which is the mental well-being, depression, stress, and anxiety. We also try to focus on subtopics, bullying, body image, eating disorders, and how to increase the resilience in terms of mental health. Our target group was basically the Emirates of Dubai, but also we try to focus on the vulnerable groups, women, men, uh, youth, elderly, people of determination, patients with chronic diseases, cancer patients with their families, as well as our professionals. Uh, our plan for awareness campaign included physical campaigns, social media campaigns, as well as uh, distributing educational materials that is focusing on mental health. Overall, we had 280 events and campaigns for uh, mental health awareness, uh, uh, around 60,000 number of beneficiaries uh, benefited from these awareness campaigns, and we had a total of 95% of their happiness uh, rate. The, the, our participants were 95% happy uh, in terms of our awareness uh, campaigns. So this is in brief. I'm very sorry about the uh, the quality of the presentation. Uh, this was in brief our initiative. Uh, the Emirates of Dubai is focusing on increasing the uh, awareness and increasing the capacity of uh, those who knows about mental health. Uh, this is a, a very large uh, program. This is just a little bit of it. Uh, we will continue doing it for the coming years, inshallah, until 20. And thank you for listening. And I'm happy to answer any questions if there are. Thank you. Thank you so much for the insightful uh, presentation. And I'm sure uh, some of us have written down the questions. I will come back to you. And the, we were able to follow the presentation on the screen. So thank you so much. You're welcome. So our next presentation is from Association Tunisienne pour la Promotion de la Santé, and that is with Dr. Karim Abdel Walid. Thank you, uh, Prof, uh, for joining us, or Doctor, but I'm using the title that is in front of me. Over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all. Uh, I'm, I'm here uh, to chair with uh, Dr. Uh, Selim Mouteni, our uh, consultant, uh, to present our uh, uh, presentation, brief uh, presentation. Uh, Dr. Selim, uh, have you any time to, 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 to make? Uh, okay. Do you see my Thanks, screen? Thanks, Dr. Salim. Yeah, and I'll, over to you and Dr. Salim, welcome and thank you as well for making the time to share your presentation and insight yeah. with us, but also globally. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Do you see my screen? Not yet. Yes. It's okay now? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, based on uh, uh, Geneva Charter for Wellbeing, we have, uh, we took to, to present uh, some uh, uh, exceptional uh, experience in Tunisia uh, with uh, my colleague, Dr. Selim. So uh, Tunisian Association for Health Promotion is a member in, in World Federation of Public Health Association since uh, 20, uh, since uh, 20, 20, 30 years. Uh, so uh, we began to, 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 to make um, a focus and, uh, and uh, uh, to, to, to explain uh, our uh, Tunisian uh, crisis in, in, uh, in COVID-19. Uh, uh, that's why I'm <coughs> sorry. I began to, to, to start and to represent uh, our uh, the first. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm, I, I'm uh, Kerim Abdelrahid. I'm president of Tunisian Association for Health Promotion. 
I, will, I have established, sorry. I have established our, uh, our uh, uh, an efficient plan to vaccinate uh, 3 million people in just one day. Uh, that's uh, in fact, it's, 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 it's uh, uh, the project was approved by, by the Tunisian uh, Republic's presidency using all available methods, information and logistical and communication tools to design a national day uh, was akin to arranging a, an election day. So um, my idea in this time uh, to, 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 to remove people uh, in one day, in one shot to make vaccination for extensive immunization with support from the Ministry of Health, Civic Society and uh, mil military health uh, uh, and all, uh, all actors in, in public health in Tunisia. Uh, and after that, <clears throat> Uh, you, 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 you see, you see many, 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 uh, uh, many, many media, many, many support medias in, in, in all countries. It's, it's, it's very important moment in Tunisia in 2021. Uh, we have, we have uh, a big, a big event to, to celebrate uh, the, the first day of vaccination. Second. Next, this is uh, in, in the left. This is many uh, articles, uh, newspaper, uh, social media. Uh, this is uh, the first action uh, in the world. We have uh, 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 the first score. <coughs> Next. This is many, uh, many, uh, all uh, radios, uh, TV, uh, social media. And we have working with uh, an American foundation. It's called uh, initi Initiative for uh, Save, uh, Save Lives. That's why uh, we have uh, Focus it in 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 this in this way, uh, and uh, to make to make uh, we have you know uh, Tunisia is the first uh, the first uh, country who have uh, make uh, a one shot uh, vaccination one day. We have uh, a half a million, I think half a million. Yeah, some degree of it, uh, of needs is coming and accused in most children up to half of adolescent and 20% uh, uh, to 30% of people aged to uh, 20 to, to 14 uh, to 40. Uh, sorry for uh, we have we have many 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 articles in the French language uh, so uh, the field of vaccination with uh, which affects many Tunisian is often spread via, um, via social network, summed up of uh, effectiveness of vaccination against COVID-19. So uh, this time we have uh, the first, I think the first, uh, uh, the first day in, uh, in, 80, uh, in 8 August, I think next, uh, Dr. Sadi. Thank you, Mr. Karim. Um, yeah. From my side, uh, <clears throat> First, uh, thank you for this opportunity to be with you and share some uh, um, information regarding uh, Tunisia experience. My name is Salim Morteni. I have medical background and I'm a consultant trainer uh, of uh, Katarsis um, uh, Society. Uh, so um, we have uh, this opportunity to share with you a kind of link between the uh, pandemic uh, COVID-19 uh, um, issue uh, with the vaccination and our initiative uh, supported by Catharsis in partnership with the uh, uh, Association Tunisienne de Prévention de la Santé, uh, uh, which is the International Health Awareness Film Festival. First of all, um, I um, 
found two um, articles, um, scientific ones, uh, which was, were uh, made by uh, two uh, teams in Tunisia. The first one was focused on uh, healthcare professionals. And this article um, uh, reached, uh, this study reached uh, more than 1,000 healthcare professionals and they try to um, screen the um, awareness and the uh, acceptance of uh, uh, vaccination with uh, uh, against covid-19 and uh, this uh, showed that uh, even uh, with uh, healthcare professionals uh, we have this fear uh, against uh, vaccination and uh, uh, the two main um, reasons uh, where uh, the um, allergic uh, side effects, the immediate ones, and uh, the uh, long-term uh, side effects uh, for 23%, uh, uh, this uh, for the uh, first uh, um, study. The second study uh, was um, with the citizen and uh, uh, it reached um, 100 uh, citizens uh, and uh, uh, they found uh, 45 no motivations uh, to be vaccinated uh, against uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, based on side effects. And uh, this um, covered uh, all kind of uh, vaccines and the same reason is the side uh, effects so uh, the initiative um, uh, was based on this uh, problem this issue and uh, we uh, try to uh, tackle uh, this uh, problem uh, this mental health problem uh, based on art and uh, we launched uh, in 2020 the first session for the um, health awareness film festival and the first session used to be was a um, local one i mean tunisia and the theme was covid 19 uh, and the idea was to encourage um, uh, citizens from health or from cinema, audiovisual, or everyone who would uh, contribute to educate uh, people against COVID-19. And uh, a kind of uh, short films was where um, received the first session in 2020, we received uh, only 30 um, films, awareness, I mean films, against COVID-19. And uh, this um, initiative was uh, um, appreciated by Ministry of Health uh, and by um, WHO locally in Tunisia. Uh, this encouragement uh, supports us to go to uh, continue this initiative. And the second one in 2021, we focused on, we tried to focus on um, uh, other uh, themes, uh, general ones, to uh, <coughs> discover what were the uh, key uh, issues or priorities in terms of uh, public health based on uh, cinema. And uh, the, uh, the initiative uh, was uh, extended to uh, be international uh, initiative and uh, the health care, the uh, mental health have the um, big uh, uh, impact or uh, have the uh, biggest ratio uh, among the different teams uh, each uh, session. Now we are uh, preparing the fifth one and uh, uh, some uh, figures. So in uh, last last year, last year the um, the percentage of mental health is something like 45% uh, among all the, um, the uh, uh, film received, uh, which were uh, 608 films from uh, 52 uh, countries. 
so this um, this session, I mean the fourth session. Uh, sorry for the mistake. Here it's twenty thirty twenty twenty three, and here it's twenty twenty two. Sorry for that. So last okay. year, uh, last year it was um, uh, we received uh, nine hundred sixty nine films from eighty seven countries, and the uh, uh, the amount or the percentage of mental health films were sixty four percent, which represents six hundred twenty two. Uh, this uh, showed that uh, this issue, this mental this, uh, health issue, was the priority um, everywhere, especially in Tunisia. And uh, uh, different stakeholders in the health uh, sector uh, were, were with uh, this initiative, and uh, mainly psychiatric, uh, psychiatric uh, uh, medical societies joined this initiative. and. Uh, now we are initiating uh, some workshops in uh, universities, in schools, uh, to uh, project, uh, to uh, share the best um, film awareness film and to discuss uh, around these uh, issues. And uh, okay. thank you for okay, your doctor. attention. Okay, Dr. Doctor, doctor, doctor Selim. So, uh, however, the role of association and organization concerned with the advancement of mental health remains to formulate strategies and programs to restore citizens' trust in the vaccination process. For our part, we are working to establish a network with all uh, those uh, who want to restore citizen psychological balance following uh, the, 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 sorry, following the hurricane uh, COVID-19, so we are, uh, as a, a civic society, uh, we are, uh, uh, in fact, uh, to, uh, to, to, to search opportunity and collaboration with you, with uh, all, uh, all uh, parts of the world, especially uh, we have uh, many projects to, uh, to make it uh, especially uh, now we're working in in in, uh, in uh, digital health. Uh, we have uh, last year we have organized the first uh, congress, uh, Africa and Middle East uh, digital health conference, and we will uh, uh, we will organize uh, the second edition uh, in Paris in uh, next uh, October. And uh, we invite all people uh, to work with us uh, in this way. Uh, as, as I said uh, in first time, we have based uh, in uh, the Geneva Charter of Wellbeing uh, to, to make uh, uh, many projects uh, with you. Uh, with uh, with Hind, with uh, Lilian, with uh, uh, Mimi's and uh, Australia, we think to to introduce uh, our collaboration, uh, uh, if you want, in Australia and the other continent. And uh, if that all, and uh, we 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 are we are pleasure. We have a pleasure to uh, to hear. Uh, again with you uh, in next uh, event or next uh, webinar, uh, especially uh, in the promotion of health. Thank you for all. Thank you for uh, for uh, for uh, all participants from uh, over the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Profs, and thanks everybody for your time, for the contribution. I think uh, we've got uh, some people online as well who were not necessarily presenter for this uh, presenters for this recorded session. So maybe I'll start with them if they have any questions. And I think um, please uh, use your microphones. And if you're online, just um, please now, I think you can turn on your cameras as well. Uh, because we'll finish uh, with the formal proceedings and the presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Okay, so from the presentations, did any uh, people in the room have any questions? I think I've got a few from for the respective presentations though, but I'm also mindful that we have about 10 minutes to go and people have got programs for the day. So that's why it would be great to start with the people who are here, but they were not presenting first. So I have I have question. In fact, uh, how to to make to make uh, collaboration uh, with all people here? This is the the, the question. So we have to to present our our work, our department, our uh, faculty, our uh, university. But the, the 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 only question: how to to make collaboration? How to 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 share our experience with us? With all people here, this is my question. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Karim. I guess um, I can answer that question in terms of one of the aims and the objectives of this presentation was also to start those collaborations and those networks uh, following uh, this uh, presentations. And hopefully, people who are not online because this session was strictly to do the recordings. Once they see your presentation, I'm sure they'll be sending out uh, a request for collaborations. And thanks as well for the invitation. If Australia is ready to collaborate, absolutely, yes, we are at the profession, at the personal level, but also hopefully at the institutional level. So it'd be good to have those conversations outside of uh, this uh, forum, because I wear quite a few hats, as you could see, outside of the university. I'm the chair of the African Science Research and Innovation Council for the African Union Commission for the Australasia chapter. And we are currently in the process of also planning an event. So they've requested I host them in Australia, hopefully, and we are thinking about a capacity building workshop sometimes, hopefully this year or next year. So it'd be fantastic to extend that invitation to everybody in this room, but for you people to also extend those uh, invitations. I guess for me, from your presentations, if I start with the last one, especially on the vaccination, but also from what um, uh, the public interest in terms of resist, uh, vaccination resistance that we know is a common issue uh, and looking at the historical background of the distrust between health professionals and community people. Mm -hmm. I think um, the approach that you are using, uh, uh, using film was something that really interests me and I'm really curious to understand how that uh, approach to sharing the messages and bringing in the community, especially at the grassroots levels, have you seen that improve acceptance, especially amongst uh, the most remote and maybe hard to reach communities? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, in fact, uh, the initiative um, uh, gave, gave us the opportunity uh, to, uh, to gain two uh, things. First one is to give the opportunity uh, to the participants, I mean, to film producer, filmmaker, uh, to make a research and to uh, discuss uh, uh, scenarios around this problematic, these uh, problems. Uh, and this itself uh, was a kind of uh, a treatment uh, uh, of this fear. The, the second uh, way is the uh, projection and discussion uh, around these uh, films and uh, uh, when we uh, uh, select the main films i mean uh, to 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 give them prizes uh, after that we uh, we uh, go to the universities and to the schools to uh, project and to um, to share these films and to discuss to discuss uh, the content the subject in um, in presence and in collaboration in partnership with experts and mainly the uh, national association of psychiatrists uh, in in Tunisia and these moments uh, were and still still uh, be uh, a nice opportunity to uh, support uh, uh people and mainly young people to uh to contribute uh to their uh, mental health well uh, being 
Thank you so much. Thanks for the insight. I guess then my next question is uh, with um, for Dr. Uh, Hen um, Al um, Al Wadi in relation to your presentation. And I'm just going back to the question where I wrote it from the Dubai Health Authority. Really just looking at some of the groups that um, you reached across the respective uh, Emirates, because I think that was such a big spread looking at the map that you shared with us. And did you find some particular groups in different Emirates respond differently to your messaging or has there been some sort of uniformity? And thinking from where I said, we think Dubai and the Emirates have got a high migrant population, especially in Dubai. How, how um, does your work reach those groups in particular? Because most often than not, we can tend to focus on the locals <coughs> rather than these other groups, especially when they are mi <coughs> migrant groups, they may, uh, they may not necessarily be visible. So that would be my question for you. And then for our colleagues um, uh, uh, who uh, did the presentation as in um, uh, Professor and Dr. Uh, Kalut, I think um, your project as well, I think that was really uh, interesting, but I was really focused on knowing the small population of Lebanon, but really just thinking that you have 1.5 million refugees from Syria. You know, uh, that is a significant population group. That is almost like a, a quarter of your population, really, uh, just one group. So how are you finding that in terms of the work that you are doing? But also, I'm sure there are other refugee groups as well that are not over highlighted in your work. And how are you navigating that? Okay, so I may, I, um, <clears throat> if you allow me, I would like to answer your question. Uh, uh, yes, in the Emirates of Dubai, we are used to having the diversity of the nationalities and the populations uh, since the day I can remember, actually. So uh, when we are doing these kinds of training and awareness, we ensure that we are uh, thinking about the uh, multinationality in our Emirates. So that's why we try to give the awareness in different languages as well for them. Uh, <clears throat> we are having future plans also to include the uh, uh, different uh, kind of religions as well and to seek out to those individuals, especially, you know, mental health is, is a, a very, uh, uh, not an easy, not an easy topic to tackle. But it was uh, highlighted that it is very important, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic. So we noticed that they have like, yes, we want to ha to know more about it. And then uh, still they are a little bit reluctant in that. So we have future plans in the coming years to target uh, a larger group of uh, uh, nationalities, religions, and uh, and all the categories that I mentioned. This is uh, this is not a one year program. It is a, at least five years program. Uh, in terms of the training, uh, the map that I showed you uh, that was including the training program that we uh, showed to focus the, in year one on the school community. Uh, uh, first, in the first uh, half year, uh, we uh, give it the chance for them to volunteer to join these training uh, programs, and then uh, we reevaluate and recalculate, and then we see who are the uh, community schools that are not uh, enrolling their names in the training program, and then we reach out to them and ask them about the reasons uh, why they are not joining. And uh, I, fortunately, this year, uh, schools are reaching out for us, asking for the training program uh, for the second year in a row, and then that will let, let us to think maybe we need to do for them another year of training. But uh, this year we are focusing more on the community of universities. Uh, we want to also focus on doing training for our first responders uh, because uh, they reach out to us and asking to have these kinds of training uh, programs as well. I hope that answered your question. Absolutely, thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Professor Amini, for the very important question. Um, actually, indeed, about a fourth 
uh, it's estimated, right? So we're all of these are actually estimates, but uh, it's, it has been estimated that about 25% of the current residents of Lebanon are actually um, uh, Syrian refugees. And um, it um, this this has definitely put a lot of strain on, on the uh, healthcare system and the resources, which uh, respectively have been very fragile, even pre-crisis, um, and also very limited. Um, so uh, two points in that respect. One is that we have a national mental health program as part of the Ministry of Public Health that has been adamant on redirecting all of the resources that they're getting, all of the financial resources and grants, into making sure that mental health is available for all residents of Lebanon. And this is quite important because when all of the, you know, when all of the funding was pouring into the Syrian refugee population, it created some kind of a sensitivity between the host communities that are also underprivileged uh, in the areas in which the Syrian refugees were residing. So for example, the Bika is one area. And so to make sure that there's more harmonious uh, living arrangements between the refugees and the host communities, uh, what the ministry and what the National Men's Health Program has been um, striving to do and to achieve is to make sure to upscale mental health care services and uh, primary health care centers in underprivileged communities and to make sure that it's available for all residents of Lebanon, so Syrian refugees and, um, you know, and Lebanese and other um, people of other nationalities as well. And the research has been more, more or less not centralized, but screened by the ministry as well to make sure that we don't overburden this population with research because everyone wants to do conduct, you know, research and collect data. And this is not good for their mental well-being, for the Syrian refugee mental well-being. So to make sure that it's 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 uh, it's complementary, uh, they also kind of like want to know what's happening on the ground. We are conducting right now an NIH-funded study in the Bekaa, um, working with young community healthcare workers and the implementation of PM Plus, which is a WHO intervention. And uh, it's it's been one, it's been my, it's been uh, enlightening to work with young people uh, from this refugee population and also make sure that they are, um, you know, doing, we're doing it in a participatory manner so that they are coming up again with, you know, they're part of the decision-making process and part of the change that we are hoping to make in that community. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I think, um, Moda, um, your work as well with the most, one of the indigenous groups or some of the indigenous groups with within one of the most remote areas here in Australia. I thought that was quite um, uh, insightful, but also really engaging. And is there one word or something that you want, that you did not share in your presentation that you want to share before we close? But before you say that, I want to just say that Moda is um, an intern after finishing his master's of public health with the World Federation of Public Health Association. And when and I have been mentoring him and when he came up with the idea that to host something or to do something for the Global Health Week, there was support from the World Federation for Public Health Association and everybody really thought it was a good idea. So he's been very, very instrumental in coordinating and hundreds of emails that would have come from him to some of you and across the board. So I just want to also acknowledge you before you say your last words, Moda, and being an intern, that means he's finished now, he needs a job somewhere. So if you've got a good research position and you want somebody who's gonna be very, very active, I, I definitely can sit here as a mentor and somebody who's been guiding to him to say uh, to say to you that uh, it will be wonderful to have somebody like that with his skill set and motivation uh, on your team. So if you have something to share, Mogda. Thank you very much, Mimi, for your kind words. I really appreciate appreciate that. Uh, honestly, uh, Dr. Salim and Mr. Karim, I really enjoyed your um, your presentation. You know, vaccinating three million people in one day, it's it's too much, really. And Sorry. I honestly enjoyed um, the way that you try to, you know, disseminate the health messages, which is through films, which is really awesome. You know, I was part of the COVID-19 uh, response in Australia. Uh, I remember we used heaps of um, of social media methods and media media methods as well. So we used heaps of Facebook stuff. And um, I remember I collaborated with some people to, uh, you know, to do, to develop some songs dedicated and targeted to kids. And it worked really. I just want to compliment your work and I really enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully in the next pandemic, I'm gonna, you know, come up with the, with, with your idea to, <laughs> to, uh, to use films to, you know, to disseminate these messages.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank and you. I actually was asked from the Department of Health here to actually do a type of video messaging as well for the COVID-19, uh, especially for the most difficult to reach uh, migrant uh, populations here. So you can look that up online. So again, what you everybody here has shared with us resonates so much with what is happening here in Australia. So I just want to say thank you again. And yes, um, we've got a hand up, please. Yes, uh, so we did not put our contacts in, in uh, the presentation. So if uh, the audience who will listen to, to and uh, look, uh, watch our presentation on the 10th, how can they contact us? Can you provide them with the contacts later? I think when we you... should be able to. Yes, we yeah. should be able to put a slide, but if you put your details as well in the chat now, then we should be able to communicate mm, that information. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Chat. <clears throat> so, um, is there so, uh, yes, any other person in the room who would like to share mm -hmm. information that or something that we've not covered? <laughs> If not, thank you so much for your time. And um, yeah, uh, once this go too. online, live on LinkedIn or any other platform, we'll ensure mm -hmm. uh, that you are tagged. I don't know how many people I'm connected with here on LinkedIn, but that will come from the World Federation for Public Health Association centrally. So we want to disseminate, but please also share the presentation and this recording yeah. with your own professional network. So thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank was you. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Nice all. meeting you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. And I feel, I feel to make a bridge, much. a bridge, a mental health bridge with all people. Yes. Thank you. Thank we you. will.